Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to part four of this week's episode of Leading Our Own Way. We're getting into some valuable insights from this week's guests that you can definitely apply to your own journey. Please definitely stay tuned for advice and inspiration that can help us all. If you missed the first part of the week in part one, two, and three, definitely go back. The show notes should be filled with all the links, so go and click on them if you need to catch up. Also, definitely subscribe to the channel and all the other ones if you can. It's going to really help the show. But for now, enjoy the rest of the story. Agree. Totally agree with that because I was someone who believes in if you cannot take care of the small stuff, how are you going to take care mm -hmm. of the big things? If exactly. you yeah. cannot learn how to manage small money, mm -hmm. why do universe have the reason to send you a bigger money? So mm -hmm. usually the way it works is you learn how to manage um, a smaller money and then the universe will send you like a test like, okay, I'll test this person on maybe the scan part or the investing part. What will he feel like when he lose this money if, if he's ready? And if we're totally ready, emotionally, mentally, physically, like everything, we will gain more and more and more. So I think yeah. it goes back to the saying, if you are not ready to manage the small thing, you will never go to the bigger thing. And I think it goes to, you know, when, like, let's say you're driving a car, there was a screw that is not, you know, tight enough inside of it because you think, ah, it's okay, it's a small screw. It, it can ruin the whole car and yeah. get you into an accident. Yeah, so completely I think agree. it's... Yeah. Mm. I, I, mate, I completely agree, and I, I do. I, I always say this to people as well. It's like when you're not looking after yourself, and you want to go to work straight away and do your hard work, but you don't look after yourself in the morning. Let's say it's just an example, maybe a routine that you get going to set yourself up for the day. Imagine you're driving a six-hour journey. Are you going to set off in the car without checking the fuel gauge that day? No, because that would be fucking stupid, right? You are going to check the fuel before you leave for a six-hour drive. Same with the same with the body in the morning and the mind. Why do people not prepare themselves better in the morning to set themselves up for the day? You know, I've on, again. I'm only saying that I started at 38 years old doing that. You know, um, it took me 38 years to figure it out, <laughs> but it's definitely changed my life. And um, if I can, if if I can pass that message on, and one person does it, fantastic. You know. Okay, so there's. I feel like before we do come to the end of the. Uh, episode there's a gap missing in our journey before we come back to um how house of leaders started um a, a, a after your education period if we go from towards the end of your education leaving secondary school at 18 years old uh, um do you take any further education on after that yes 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 um this is interesting though i there's something i want to share okay so I initially don't want to take any edu education at all, like further education, if you ask me, because I, well, I don't like, um, especially in Indonesia, I don't feel like the education can, um, you know, support my cause. <laughs> but um, the reason I take the education, so I have three degree, two bachelor, one master's. Um, I mean, uh, is it? What is it called in there? Um, it graduates in an undergraduate. Uh, post, uh, yeah, undergraduate, yeah, it would be your degree, yeah, and then your post, uh, then a master's would be, and then obviously your PhD after that. Yeah, it's before the PhD. So, yeah. But I take it because my my mom always says um, I don't have the qualifications, the money, and the, oh, the money, opportunity sorry. to take. Um, higher school my mom i think always only graduates um high school he don't have the money that time to go to college and to university so he always stressed that he wants her child to be able to grow up and go to college and have a degree and you know ever since he she divorced um got divorced from my stepdad she has been working um, herself as a single parent. I, I, I saw and I was really inspired by her. Um, she's really hardworking as a single parent. 
So, yeah. Although I don't want to go to college, yeah, I did it anyway for my mom. But the thing I want to send, a message I want to send um, to people out there is, don't rush this. If you do, if you don't feel like you want to go to college yet, then take a year, take a one year break. Like you know, yeah. get to learn, get get to know yourself more. Um, go out there because I saw a lot of people, especially in. Indonesia, they rush to their um, college life, and then they know they are taking the wrong major, and then they change again, and then they change again, and then in, in the end they drop out because they they have just realized they don't like um, you know the college life, and they don't feel like they need it. Like you're wasting a lot of time and money there. So why did you get into college in the first place? So don't rush. Just Um, you know, spend time with yourself, get to know yourself, get to know the world, travel if you need, connect with people, join events, network with people, learn new things. I think that's But, it's more important than you know simply going to college and hating it in the end. Yeah, it's that typical old traditional way, isn't it? You know, like they they used to do in the seventies, eighties, and so on. You know, high school, college, university, get your education, then you do whatever you want. But In a way, I—I I mean, I did do that. I went to, you know, college after high school. Went to university. I mean, I just chilled out in university. I played basketball, hung out with my friends, partied, whatever. I wouldn't say I did great at university. I travelled the world later. A few years later, I became a bit of a financial advisor. Travelled the world. That's my connection with Australia. Did loads of other countries too: China, New Zealand. Canada, America, Cook Islands, New Zealand, yeah, all of those places. And then I kept traveling and traveling in the summer holidays, worked in high school, and then I came and studied over here. And my ethic, my my ethics towards the studies were different. I knew what I wanted. I knew my purpose. I knew I wanted to be a teacher. All of those things fell into place, and there wasn't even a there wasn't even a question. My my work ethic was just so much better. So I knew. So leaving university, I didn't feel very smart. I've, I've, I, I can relate to what you've said in this episode. I didn't feel very smart at all, but it was down to my ethic, it, uh, my my maturity, and my motivation, and not understanding me. I thought at the time I did, but I clearly didn't understand me and myself and my purpose. And it sounds cliche because I heard a million people before they travelled say, "You'll find yourself. You'll find who you are. You'll learn." More. You know what? One hundred percent agreed. When I travelled, I found out so much about more about myself. Some things that I liked, <laughs> and some things that I didn't like. But nevertheless, I found out things about myself. And yeah, when I studied at Monash here in Australia, Monash University, I came out with the top grade of teaching at the qualification for teaching. I came out. For, you know, in England, that would be known as a first top of the range. But in university in England, came out with I still I graduated with honors, but it was barely making it. You know, um, and that was down to my commitment and not uh, yes, commitment, but understanding my purpose again. You know, so I can I can compl- sorry anyway. I cut you off, went on my little tangent, but yeah, you know, what where did it go for you then after that? Yeah, so there's also dramas in um, yeah. college life, but yeah. What, what kind of traumas in in college life? I mean, you'd have to go through everything, but what what kind of things did you go through with college then? Was it same things of high, secondary, and primary? Um, the name is still going, to, uh, still happening, but not as mm. bad as when I was still in school. But I do get one. I don't think it's trauma or wound, but um, but yeah, I think this is a funny story that in the end, the wound or this trauma, I don't which I don't know which one is actually helping me, and I don't want to remove this. So this is what happens. I was driving, so the the principal, like the, the owner, I would say, of the um, college I was in in twenty 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 eleven to twenty fifteen. Is also he also owns like a internet cafe. So I used to go there to play games because I was close with him. Um, and then one day I go there at night, just I think just to 
give him something. Just go there for a while, and then I, I was about to go home. I park my um, bike in front, and then I go inside. And then when I go outside, my bike is gone. Someone stole it. Now, I remember, I totally remember I locked the bike. There was no chance I don't lock the bike. Yes, I was riding bike my whole life. I, I locked the bike. Bike. Who's your habit? Yeah. Yeah. But in his defense, because he don't want to, I think he don't want um, people to think his internet cafe is dangerous. People can stole bike easily from his internet cafe. He tells everyone in the college that I forgot to lock my bike and I was so clumsy that I my bike was stolen by other people easily. And he tells this story to everyone, including the staff, the lecturer, the professors, my friends, like everyone, everyone he meet. Since then, I was always afraid. Have I locked the door? Have I locked the car? Have I locked the yeah. bike? Should I double oh check? God. At first, this, you know, it's kind of annoys me. Like, for example, for example, even now, after I go out from my home, I will still think, did I lock the door? I'll go back to my home and double check it. Yeah. At first, this annoys me, but as I get used to it, I think it's okay, though, because I now I can go to everywhere without having to worry about it because I, I'm a hundred percent sure I lock it. I'm hundred percent sure of everything. So every time before I go, before I leave the home, before I do anything, I'll always double check it. For example, um, before I post something, before I send a message, before I post my podcast, um, the mindset podcast, for example, I always double check everything, double, triple check. So if it goes through for me, there's nothing wrong anymore. Even the small thing. It's a good thing, but I think it slows me down in a lot of aspects because I was double, double, triple checking the things that, because sometimes you don't have to double and triple check things, but yeah. I always double, triple check things because of this thing. Is it draining? So, yeah. The, it's, Is that draining? Then? It's draining when it first started, but I get used to it and I kind of enjoy it though because I was a perfectionist. I was a deep thinker, and so I think it goes together with um, the thing I love. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a shame I didn't know that about you. That, again, thanks for sharing. Um, it's, you, you, it sounds like you're a bit of a perfectionist, but that's okay, because look at what you're doing. It's obviously worked out for you pretty well. Um, okay, so around that time then after you, you leave, um, and before you really pursue and before we get into the story of what you did to enhance your chances of, you know, building something successful, um, you you worked a number of jobs. What was going on with with you and your mum at that time then? Um, yeah, what happened with your mum and work-life balance? Awesome. Thanks for asking. So um, I think middle in the middle of college life, my so my mom is a single parent and um my, I still have a little brother step brother um mm -hmm. who is still in school and I heard that my mom is having kind of financial situation so she was talking about selling the house I know how much this house meant to her so I don't want her to sell the house so in the middle. Um, or the college, I think 2013, I started working um, as a broker in a Forex company while, um, I think if I'm not wrong, I am, you know, offering some kind of program because I was in IT. So I offer, so I, I, I team up with uh, my friends in the college too. So I, I don't know how, I don't, I know IT, but I don't like coding. So my friends would do the coding. I, was, I will do the selling part. Mm -hmm. And I also sell like design. So I design things for people and then I go to um, the agency to print it up mm -hmm. and then I charge a little bit higher. 
so I can make it a uh, a little more a little more from there, so I can support my uh, my mom. It goes on and off, on and off until 2015 before I started House of Leaders. Um, but before I started House of Leaders in 2015, um, I think early early 2015 January on January, I think it's before I meet my I, I met my first mentor. I was already working five jobs, five different jobs. So the first one is um, as a, um, I was still a broker in a forex company, and then I was an insurance agent, and then I was the program thing still going, the design thing is also still going, and the last one, the last one is the last one is oh only four. The last one is I was about to join. I was about to join. Right. So yeah. that time, you know, I was calling a lot of people because I was I want to invite them into to invest in um, um because I was broker, I want them to invest in the company. Um until I met this one person. So it, he invited me to speak. And then one thing that he asked me that um, actually makes me think. What is your dream? What is your purpose as as a as a person? I, 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 I say I, I never had, I never think of that. You know, I don't have any dream. I just want to make money. I just want to support my mom. And I just want to go back to enjoying my life. Maybe I play games. Maybe I hang out with my friends. You know, I don't have any dream. I don't have any purpose. I just want to live my life. Um, and we had a lot of deep talk back then. Until, um, so we, it's, it's way much deeper because we talk until I told her that I, I think he, he's really good at you know digging and you know you know peeling the 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 onion. So yeah. we get it to I told her I told him about my story about me and my mom. Although my stepfather already leaves um, a divorce for my mom, the relationship never goes better. It stays there. Every time I meet my mom, we always fight. But this time, I am older. I talk back because I don't always agree with my mom. I always give him, I give her reasons, and because she never gave me love, I, you know, I don't treat him as one. Like I don't give her love too. But I don't know. But yeah. Maybe there's an explanation about that on, on that, but yeah, that's what um, I talk with my man, I, I, I sh this, my sharing I share this with my mentor, who then who 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 later be my mentor. So um, she he says I can help you. You can join my company because he's in the MLM company. Uh, you can join me if you want. If you don't want to join. That's totally okay, but I can help you. I don't know why he decided to help me back then. It was really weird. I do feel like he was about to scam me at that time because everything goes that goes that smooth. But yeah, yeah. He says that I can help you if you want. Um, and then I ask him, "Are you sure you want to help me?" I do see him as someone who can guide me in my life. And then I asked him this one question um, that actually he answers me with something that assures me that I want to follow him. I asked him, um, do you, are you sure that you want to, um, you know, teach me and guide me? Can I follow you anywhere? Whenever you meet someone, I just want to follow you. I just want to see how you interact with other people. I just want to pick your mind. I just want to learn from you. Um, is it okay if whenever I had reasons, whenever I, I, you know, had a problem, I fight with my mom, I tell you this story because I want to know from your perspective how should I respond uh, in a better way. And did what um, because I I do know the way I respond is wrong, but I don't know how to respond better. And then he answers me, "I will, and you can follow me anywhere. And if you had a problem, if you had a fight in the middle of the night, if and you call me three a.m. and I I'm still awake, 
I will, I will, um, you know, I will, um, what's the word? I lost the thought. Support you? Um, yeah, I will pick up the call and I will support you. And then you can tell me story if you want that night or if you want to meet the, uh, the next day, it's up to you. But I will support you all the way. And I then like he guy. says, <laughs> and he says, brilliant, don't make a rush decision. Go home, think it over. Um, you don't have to leave your company because you have to help your mom, obviously. Don't take rush decisions, just go home for now. The next day, I schedule a meeting with him. I, when I meet him, I say, I already resign. I was ready to follow you. I'll join your company. I'll do whatever it takes to grow me, to heal my relationship with my mom and to learn from you. He, he was surprised. And then he says, uh, this is so rush. Now you don't have anything to do. Do you need like, he want to give me salary that time to support me and say, I don't need it. Um, if you really guide me, I'm sure I will get there. So I don't need the salary. Um, I just need you to keep your promise and guide me and, you know, mentor me. Um, so I joined him around January. It did almost the, like January. The, like the moment I meet him, a few days later, I joined him. And then I, I join him anywhere he goes, um, any meeting he goes. I when he meet with another top leader of the MLM company, I joined that meeting because he allows me to, and I learn from them. Like if they talk until 2 a.m. in the morning, no matter how far it is, I will go there, I'll listen to them, I will learn from them. I do this for January, February, March, April, like four, four to five months. On 30th, May, 2015, I started House of Leaders. I think, Oh, by the way, before I started House of Leaders, this, I learned a lot of leadership from him and another leaders there. It actually heals my relationship with my mom. And my mom even says, whoever is this person, I will like this, this give me his number. I want to thank him personally. Oh. It's, it's that impactful. So, so I think, um, if this leadership topics, can be applied in life, not just in mm. career or in company or in an organization, but mm. also in life. This is going to help a lot of people. I, and I'm sure there's a lot of people like me out there, like there's 7 billion people living in mm. earth. There's definitely people like me out there. So I started House of Leaders um, in 30 May. 2015. On when I started House of Leaders, I just want to start it as a blog, as a platform where I can share my journey. So usually I will post, like for example, I go home, and then I will, you know, write down the story, like journal my story, like today, and then I will think of a quote that relates to my story, and then I will create, like I will choose a picture, and then I will um, edit the quote inside of it. And then I will put House of Readers credit and I will share my story in the captions. Like I will type a really long, long one. At first, I don't got a lot of engagement. But as it grows, I think a lot of people relate. I started getting like 100 likes and 10, 10 to 20 comments for, um, per post. And then the followers grows um, from less than 1,000 to 1,000, 2,000. And finally, 10,000s. And then finally, when I hit 30,000s, the financial situation goes um, worse. And I was thinking of selling House of Peter because someone is offering like a few hundred um, dollars that time, US dollars. A few hundred dollars or a few hundred <clears throat> thousand dollars? A few thousand, uh, a few hundred dollars. A few hundred dollars? Yes. All right. And that time, it's, I think, the American dollar says eleven thousand. Now it's is fifteen thousand. That time it's still eleven thousand. So. So they were they were offering you eleven thousand American dollars. No no no. Um, one dollar is eleven thousand Indonesian oh, rupee at that time. Yeah. yeah yeah yeah. Sorry my bad. Yeah. 
so they were offering like a few hundred dollars like i think a tweet 400 yeah so um i always sold it because my family needs money and even a bit helps join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way don't forget to subscribe we'll see you then